the world. I don't know why I did it like that, but maybe because I'm so excited to have Georgia Jones in the studio. Woo! Hi, Georgia. Hi, Holly. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I would like you to know that I've had so many people request to have you on the podcast like for a long time, so I'm very glad you're here. Hell yeah. Yeah, people really want to talk to you. You need to put your mouth, My mouth in it on that thing. <laughs> Something I knew how to do. <laughs> Watch. Um, yeah, and actually, I do a fan question portion um, exclusively for members of my Patreon, and I always ask people, I'm like, "Hey, send me your fan questions." And sometimes people like don't send me any, and I got more fan questions for you than any other guest I've ever had. Hell yeah. I was like, "Fuck, dude, this is a lot of questions." Like, fuck yeah. Do you do you really want to know all this about her? <laughs> No, I'm just <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, so we might do some of them during this podcast, but most of them we will do um, in my second little additional exclusive podcast uh, video on my patreon.com slash unfiltered. Because you know this shit ain't free, people. The yeah. parking especially here is very expensive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so how are you? I'm good. I'm really good. Tell me, how long have you been in the industry now? Because I feel like we've known each other for a while. A long ass time. I don't, it's <laughs> 12 years this month. 12 years this month. Mm-hmm. I was 20 years in September. Hell yeah. I know, Hell yeah, right? Dude. And the time goes by so quick. So fast. Do you remember when you were a kid and your parents were, and you like couldn't wait to grow up and your parents would be like, don't say that. Like once you get older, time flies by and you'd be like, shut up. You're just saying that. And it's so true. Yeah, it like, is. how is it already like almost November? Dude, this year went by so quick. It's ridiculous. So quick. The past, actually, the past like five years have gone by. Really I, quick, I, know, so I, I know. You know, it's going to keep happening like, <laughs> like that. It's, I, I, it's going to be the holidays next year before I know it. I'm going to blink, and it's going to be. Are you distant. a holiday girl? Are you excited about the holidays coming up? Um, yes and no. I think when I was younger, I didn't really care for it much. But now that I'm older, I have like my own traditions and stuff. Interesting. I'm not really much of like a decorator. Like I don't really decorate my home or put up a tree or anything like that. But I do like um, the the feel of the holidays is very romantic to me. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. I love, um, I'm not, Christmas is like my big thing. Like Halloween, I'm like, meh, I don't really decorate my house. Though we're doing pumpkin carving tonight. Full disclosure, people, I tend to like record my podcasts weeks, sometimes weeks before they come out. So by the time this comes out, it will be after Halloween. So people will be like, what is she talking about? But just so you know, today is actually October 29th in real time. Oh, yeah. In our time. Um, so yeah, we are doing pumpkin carving tonight. But um, otherwise, yeah, Christmas is my jam. I like Christmas. I get a tree. I, like I get. I have a whole set of um, ornaments. I have like a set of like blue and white, and then like gold and white, and I like alternate them every year. I have a bunch that my mother saved for me from like when I was a little girl, like ones oh, that I made in school so and cool. stuff. So they're all like you know, like they, they say my name on them, and like when I was like seven. That's awesome. Six. That's awesome. I, we, yeah, I don't have any. I know I made those when I was a kid, but I don't have any more of them. Um, I think they broke. And My mom like saves that. everything. That's great. total pack rat. She saves it all. And then when we're older, she, you know, sends it to us. Well, now so. you're like grateful that she did. Uh, very much so. Yeah. When I was younger, I was like, throw that away. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. just junk. But now I'm like, oh, it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, little, little bears and stuff. And, oh, oh, my gosh. It was so little. It's just a little thing. Where did did you grow up here? Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. What was that like? Hell. <laughs> it was so fucking boring. Really? And repressed and depraved. And really? Just, just nothing. Just nothing there. So when did you come out to California? Eighteen. Okay. And is that when you start working in the adult industry? Yeah, I came out here to do porn. Okay. So yeah. tell us how that whole thing started. Um, well, let's see. When I the minute I turned 18, my 18th birthday, I went and got an application at a strip club. Like, I knew that was going – and pff, I knew for years at that point. I was, like, just waiting, Biden time. Were you, like, a sexually charged youngster? Very much so. Mm. I'm just out of control. <laughs> Completely out of control. Yeah. Um. So when that happened, that actually calmed me down quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because you were able to, like, freely exercise your, you mm-hmm. know, sexual tendencies. You weren't. It's when you repress people and you don't allow them to be who they are, I think that's when the problem arises. That's absolutely the problem. It, yeah. I was 100% repressed. So yeah. I finally found an outlet for me to, um, you know, release and express my sexuality and mm-hmm. also make money while doing it and support right. myself. I was fucking in love. I was like, this is my jam. I didn't ever even go out anywhere. I was 
literally working at the club every single night because I loved it so much. Wow. I was thinking about this the other day. There was, I remember at one point in the first couple of months I was working there, my manager actually told me that he couldn't allow me to come in and work that night because I had worked every single night for two weeks straight. And he said legally he couldn't allow me in the club. I was like, what the hell? This is bullshit. I want to come in and work. Legally. That's yeah. interesting. Because I'd been there for 14 days straight or something. I had to take some time off. <laughs> so I just went to their competitor down the street. <laughs> Like, do you it. like do you like dancing? <laughs> uh, I I love dancing. Actually, I I miss it sometimes. So I like, I mean, because you know I feature dance now, but I like I wish I could go under the radar sometimes. Mm. Just go to the club, and be a regular dancer. I kind of yeah. miss that like hustling lifestyle sometimes. It's, really, it's a high. It's definitely a high. That's interesting because almost every girl I talked to who was a stripper hated the hustle. Like that was a part that they didn't like. I think it takes a certain person to really enjoy that. Mm. Like to be able to walk up to someone and hustle them out of their money. Like it's, it's totally a, it's a fun thing. It's yeah, it's like a mind fuck on a whole other level. Like you're not just like mentally fucking this person. Yeah. You're also taking their money and they know you're doing it while yeah. it's happening. Yeah. That's the whole reason they came there in the first right. place. You know. But let's not forget, society says that you're the one who's exploited. Oh yeah. <laughs> Don't forget. Don't forget, like, you're the one being taken advantage of. Poor me. Poor you. Poor me. Yeah. I'm serious. Like, I, I say it all the time and people don't believe me. I'm such an entitled sex worker. I can't, <laughs> I literally cannot do anything domestic for myself. I can't cook. I can't clean. I've been a sex worker my entire adult life and I've just had it all handed to me. And yet, right. meanwhile, poor me, I need saving. Yeah. Lots of saving. Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. So um, it's kind of interesting because... We were talking a little bit before um, the podcast started about how things in the industry have changed so much. Um, and that was kind of actually one of the fan questions. Hold on, let me, let me pull it up because I want to give him credit for asking this question. Um, uh, Don Juan won. Oh, yes. I Because there's is. multiple ones. Don if, you probably know who all these people probably, are. Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, he wants to know, after so many years in this business, how do you stay sane with all the changes going on? And we were just saying, like, it has changed so much over the last 12 years. So, so you've much. seen the change. It's completely so tell me, different. like, from your experience, like, what it was like and what it's like now. Um, when I first started, you know, honestly, it's changed so much, but there's good and bad things about mm-hmm. it, I guess. When I first started, you literally had to find people to hire you. You had to be hired by people, you know what I mean? Um, their social media was, like, really just starting out. I mean, we had, like, what, MySpace back then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that dates me. <laughs> it's like, MySpace! But we didn't really have a good platform for, you know, advertising for ourselves in order to be able to produce our own content. So you really had to work with producers and directors yeah. to get on set yep. in order to make money. Mm-hmm. But there was also a lot more money going into, mm-hmm. there's a lot more budget and different mm-hmm. things like that. So yep. there was more work that way. Right. So now it's, like, you kind of... When you do it yourself, you have to work harder, but the payoff is better, I feel. Right. Being able to work for myself is great. I mean, yeah. it's a lot. Don't get me wrong. It is a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot more work than just showing up and it's sitting bad. in a makeup chair for an hour and then getting up and sitting in front of a camera and yeah. we'll wash, rinse, repeat. Yeah. It's way different. It's way more work, but I enjoy it. So mm-hmm. I, I like doing that. I'm extremely independent. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've, I get a lot of self-worth out of it too, being mm-hmm. able to do something for myself like that. Really? Yeah. So yeah. you think it like kind of helps you with your self esteem? Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. When I can wake up in the morning, check all my stats, and just like keep pushing, keep mm-hmm. myself motivated, feels great. Where? What platforms do you generally like really hustle on? Oh, uh, Twitter is where I'm the most active. Okay. On, on my Twitter, and uh, that's at XO Georgia Jones. Yeah, at XO Georgia Jones, and that's my same for my Instagram too. But Instagram's. <laughs> stupid well so, they don't really like sex workers at all yeah they don't there's yeah, don't get me started yeah they will I don't delete like facebook is what it is so yeah <laughs> facebook is the same i have my facebook account deleted um i'm yeah i'm super it's funny because i was talking to somebody who works in mainstream they're like well why don't you like go on like you know instagram and then like promote your site and then do the, like the swipe up i'm like if i do the swipe up and directly link to a porn site i'm like they will delete me yeah for sure so i have to be yeah, so heartbeat. fucking careful i mean they like literally i had a post that was literally just a sheet of a blank white sheet of paper mm-hmm. and on it it said fuck you cunt mm-hmm. just like written in blue ink yeah. that was it and i posted a picture of it and said all oh, someone wrote me a love letter is what i put in the caption yeah. and they deleted it saying it was hate speech i'm like really 
like I put it on my own. Like, put, yeah, whatever. Wow, I know. I've heard like Pete girls say that like they get their pictures of their dogs deleted mm-hmm. and like, coffee just, mugs, pictures of coffee mugs. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. stupid shit. Yeah. Haters. Do you do you think that it's people that are just constantly like reporting you? Like, do you have mm-hmm. trolls that really attack you mm-hmm. online constantly? And what kind of stuff do they say to you? Stupid shit. <laughs> Stupid shit. They're just retarded. Like, okay, because I'm constantly bitching about don't watch stolen porn because mm-hmm. it's not free, mm-hmm. and people will be like, "That's why we watch porn." Like, actually, someone just said that to me earlier. We, that's why we watch porn is because it's free. And I was like, "Eating dirt is also free. <laughs> why don't you try that, honey? It's good for you." <laughs> Just stupid shit. I think people really don't re- realize the fact that, like, I, I think it's so easy to get away with just watching free porn. Because, first of all, I think a lot of people don't want to join a website because they don't want their credit card connected to an adult site. They're afraid of some kind of exposure. Um, and also, too, that they don't see, like, the an inherent value in porn, and so they don't believe that they should invest in it. Mm-hmm. But people use it all the time. And there's still so much shame around masturbation and around watching porn. And, um, yeah, it's just like, it's just like the perfect recipe for people like wanting to consume a product, but not paying for it. And then thinking that like somehow we're just going to make money in other ways or. They absolutely think that. Yeah. And I also, they, a big portion of them also still see us as like subhuman. So it's like, even if they see a lot of people are ignorant to it, they don't understand that that content is being stolen from us. Mm -hmm. But then there's also a giant group of people that understand that and they just Mm. simply don't give a shit because they think that we're all whores and so it doesn't matter. Right, right, right. That we should be stolen from. Right, Because we're dirty, I guess. Right. Or lame. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. What's the... But the (laughs) irony is, of course, that they are using your product to fulfill their own, like, pleasure-seeking desires. They'll use the shit out of it and then turn around and, like, mock us and degrade us all the same while. Yeah. That's okay. Mm, I'm just still laughing. (laughs) <laughs> what about um, – now, you do have a lot of, like, hardcore fans, though, like, people that really love yes, you. Yes, yes. Why do you think that you have such a strong following? Do you think it's because you interact with them or do you think it's – I mean, you've always had, like, a, a very unique uh, – I don't know. Like, sometimes it's hard for me to know um, – why some girls have such a strong fan base and other girls don't. Not saying that you don't deserve it because, of course, you do. You're beautiful and you're a great performer and all of these things. But sometimes other beautiful, great performers will also, like, but they won't get, like, a, that kind of cultish. You almost have, like, a cultish fan following yeah. that other girls won't have. Do you think you know – do you know why you have that? I mean, I'm, I can't be 100% sure, but honestly, I think it's – the way a girl carries herself in the business, mm. if it really – like you can really tell it translates onto film if a girl really enjoys her job or not. Yes, And I agree. for me, that it makes a huge difference if a girl really enjoys her job or not because that's going to make my job that much easier. Right, When a right. girl shows up and she just hates life, you know what I mean? That's just – it sucks. It yeah. really does. Yeah. So I think that translates very well. And so people can see that. So it makes them feel better watching that stuff, you like know? Like they don't feel like they're exploiting that person. Yeah. Like that person is – it's easier to enjoy porn if you feel like the people that you're watching are really enjoying it. I also have noticed too I have a lot of girls fans, mm-hmm. like – and young girl fans mm-hmm. in particular. And I think that has to do with um, – they can relate with me the way mm-hmm. that like I look. They relate with that and Mm. the fact that I'm um, an empowered woman that Mm. just embraces her sexuality and quite frankly doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. And so they see something in that that they want to be then, you know. And you're also all natural. You haven't fallen into that trap of like needing to get work done. No. It's it's too expensive. (laughs) <laughs> Fuck that. I don't know. I'm way too greedy. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'd, I would like to also think too that you just embrace who you are and too, you're yeah. happy with your body the way it is. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think you look great. I, I personally like, I don't know. I think girls should do whatever they want to make them happy. And don't get me wrong, it's not like I haven't like had Botox or whatever. I am not perfect, but um, I don't know. Sometimes I just see these girls go to these cartoonish proportions with their body, and I'm just like, what? That just looks weird. I agree, I th- but you know, I'm with you on the let anyone do what they want. If they want to look like that, then it's perfectly fine with me. Right. You know what I mean? If, right. As long as they're happy, as long as they're not like doing it and it's just making themselves feel worse. Yeah. Right? the The issue is when I see girls constantly like getting more and more stuff done and just becoming like it's crazy too because it's always the like most beautiful, stunning women, oh, no. and then they go and just change everything, and it's like, but you were perfection. You were like, why? Perfection. Why before. did you? 
Why did you mess do that? with perfection? It doesn't yeah. make sense to my brain. But yeah, yeah. But people, body, everybody so. sees themselves differently. Totally, it's it's hard to. I always see like really gorgeous girls end up being the most insecure people I know, and I'm like, yeah. how does that happen? But I wonder if it's because like their whole life they had so much um, importance placed upon their looks, absolutely, and that is something yep. that is a very transient quality, and is con- you know there's always going to be somebody younger and prettier than you, and and I mean it's great to be beautiful, but. It's like it's not uh, something that you can cultivate. They've had so much worth put on their physical appearance. Right. That's you know, and people ignore like maybe their their mental abilities or their exactly. skill sets in other areas, and exactly. it's it's hard to build like a strong feeling of self esteem just based on your looks. Yeah. Hey there. Are you wondering where the rest of that video podcast went? Well, I will no longer be posting free full length podcast videos on YouTube anymore. They will now all be going on my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Now, before you start whining about how you want everything for free and you don't want to pay for anything, I'm going to tell you two things. First of all, the audio version will always be free. You can download that anywhere you get your podcasts, whether it be Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Secondly, if you want to watch the video podcast, I am allowing access for only $3 a month. That is less than an hour of parking in Santa Monica or like half a latte at Starbucks. So it's really not that much money for you to support this podcast, which allows me to bring you more real behind the scenes stories of porn sets stories from your favorite porn stars, sex educators, therapists, and basically all things sexy. So please go to my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered and support this podcast. You will have my undying gratitude and access to all of the full-length video podcasts. Thank you so much for your support.